<laughs> Hello Voxel fans! Let's take a look at how to simulate particle effects in VoxEdit so our characters appear to interact with the world around them. This episode is sponsored by the Sandbox Creator Fund. The Sandbox is an upcoming game by Pixel, the creators of Sandbox Evolution, that will feature a marketplace for players to publish their voxel creations. Dozens of artists are hard at work populating the marketplace with the first assets that will be available when the game launches. If you're interested in learning more about the Sandbox, its blockchain environment, or how you can join the Creator Fund and start getting paid to build with voxels, visit sandbox.game or check out the links in the description. Before we get started, don't forget to download Eggsby from Dropbox. I've organized each lesson to a separate folder now because there were some crashing issues when adding new nodes to existing animations. If you haven't gone through the previous lessons, you should go through the Vox Edit playlist linked up here and watch at least lessons 4 and 5 to make sure you're comfortable with setting up a rig and animating nodes. At this time, Vox Edit does not have a built-in particle system to add effects to rigs, but you can still use special effects in your animations to make them more interesting. Let's add some dust particles when Eggsby pushes his legs back right after his down frame. We'll need to add two more objects to the library, so let's select New VXM from the menu and make a very simple shape in three shades of gray-brown. Don't forget to trim the volume. The pivot position doesn't really matter too much for this model, as long as it's close to the center. Now, let's go back to the rigger and duplicate this model. Click the pencil to edit and erase most of the voxels so only a few are left on the outer edges. Then paint all of the remaining ones the lightest gray. This is the dust cloud as it dissipates. Next, we're going to create a new node from the root to be our dust, and we'll pretend I didn't have a dyslexic moment and put an L label on the right side. We don't want this to be attached to Eggsby because he moves around so much and it would make the dust bounce up and down instead of flowing along the ground. We'll also create another node as a child of the dust L and call it dust2. Attach the first dust model to the dust L node and the second dust model to the dust2 node. On the first frame, we will leave the dust nodes where they are and set the scale on dust L to 1%. This makes the particle tiny and hidden inside Eggsby until we're ready to use it. Remember, we are leaving global transformations on, so when we move, rotate, and scale dust L, Dust2 is changed with it. Next on frame 2, we'll scale Dust L to 25% so we can see it and move it to line up with the foot that's pushing on the ground behind. For me, this was at X negative 3.5, Y negative 7, and Z 3.5. Then we want to plan out the furthest point the dust will travel to before hiding it inside the body again. We want this little puff of dust to last almost half of the animation. So set the playhead to frame 12 and move the dust back to Z10. We'll want the second dust model to shrink and disappear near the end of the effect, so we'll move the playhead back to frame 10, look at the Z position, and copy it. Create a new keyframe and paste the value back in. This will keep our dust moving at the same speed while giving us the keys we need for other transformations. Halfway through the dust animation, we'll switch between the first model and the second model. So go to frame 5, again copy the Z position, and paste it into a new key. To end our effect, move the playhead to frame 13, click the reset button on position, and set the scale to 1% again. Back to frame 5, change the scale to 75% to make the effect grow. We could make this bigger, but I think 100% feels a little too large in this case. On frame 12, set the scale to 10%, so it's almost gone. Lastly for this node, we're going to add a little rotation. Put the Z rotation at 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 215 degrees on frames 5, 10, and 12 for a noticeable but not overdramatic rotation. Onto the secondary node, let's set a key on frame 5 to match Dust L's biggest scale. Then set Dust 2's first frame to 25%, and the new keyframe to 110%. This way, the second model will just barely start to pop out from inside Dust L on that frame. Then on frame 10, we want to counteract the shrinking of Dust L, so we set Dust 2 to 200% scale. Add another key at 200% to frame 12, so that Dust 2 stays larger than Dust L, but it still scales down as the effect gets ready to disappear. 
Then set the scale to 1% on the 13th frame, just like Dustel. Because the effect is hidden inside Exby, we really don't need that last frame, but it's a good habit to shrink it in case we modify the animation later and need to keep the dust hidden. Let's take a look at the animation in slow motion. That's a pretty good effect for only two models and a few keyframes. Now let's duplicate the skeleton and fix the names we just realized were wrong the whole time. Slide all the keyframes from the new skeleton to the end of the timeline, making sure to keep the same spacing between keys. From here, all we have to do is move each keyframe to the correct position on the left side and reverse the rotation by typing in the same number with a minus sign. Now XB looks like he's really running hard. There's all other sorts of effects you can do with similar techniques. You could have glowing sparks flying from a fire, drops of water splashing, bugs swarming around, and so much more. Just remember to think ahead if you want the particles to have an object as their parent, because it will greatly affect how you move them for the animation. If this video helped you out, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you want to learn more about voxel art, click subscribe and ring the bell for notifications the next time I upload. Thank you for watching.